Okay, welcome to my IGCSE 0606. So this is additional maths paper one prediction. And this is for the exam on Tuesday, May the 24th. So it may be about a month away from when I did this video. But again, hopefully this is useful for you to really focus on the topics that are the most likely to appear on your paper one. So my first section here is so-called topics of interest. Now these topics generally then more appear on the paper two rather than the paper one. So particularly functions is something I would like to label here. Okay, this has obviously appeared on paper one, but just be aware that if it doesn't appear on paper one, more likely to appear on paper two in some way. Likewise, sinusoidal models here with six out of 14, um, this can obviously be integrated into other questions, much more so than on the standard maths courses. Now I'd like to move on to the often topics and then into the almost certain category, so you know which topics to revise. My first topic here is 7 out of 14, so 50% here on the last 14 papers, so that's 2020, 2021. And a couple of things I want to highlight here, velocity time graphs. You need to know how to interpret these and draw them as well. So you need to be aware of what the velocity time graph looks like and how that relates to, say, the normal displacement graph. And then also how to integrate and differentiate between displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Know that diagram of going to integrating and differentiating, so make sure you're aware of that. My next topic is arcs and sectors with radians, so make sure you know the arc formula with radians and the area formula of a sector also with radians too. Again, exact values also help you here, so if you know what sine pi over 3 is, that will just help you and speed up the exam for you, so you've got more time to spend on those really difficult questions towards the end. It's 8 from 14. Sequence and series, 8 from 14, it's one of those irritating questions that when it appears, it usually comes in a long format with a little bit of arithmetic and then a little bit of geometric as well. Make sure you know on the formula sheets, the formulae are available to you for working out the sum, for example, of an arithmetic series or a geometric series. Notice they use the word progression on this exam. So when I'm saying series uh, on the exam, generally they use the word progression instead. On to coordinate geometry. Now, this usually involves perpendicular bisectors in some way. That seems to be the most common question they get you to ask. And then use the length of line segments in some way to then extend your knowledge further. It doesn't differ too much from the normal IGCSE 0580 course, again, but they just try and put a little few harder questions towards the end of the sub-questions there. On to com combinatorics. Now, if you talk to any of my students, they know I really don't like this topic. It's, I find it always hard to get my head around it. Um, one thing I do will give you in terms of advice is when you are looking at these problems and working out how many combinations or permutations there are, try and decide if you want to work so-called positively, so you're adding the different combinations or permutations together, or start with all the different combinations and then work backwards and take away situations. Um, that will help you then try and find the most easiest route uh, towards the answer on this topic. Very useful if you're moving on to high level analysis because this is also on their course too. Binomial expansion, always a classic, and this is quite a good topic to really revise really intently because the questions don't really change too much from year to year. And there's also tons of material out there from the A-level courses, also on the analysis courses for SL and HL. So there's lots of resources out there for you to practice these kind of questions. Again, 8 from 14 is pretty reasonable, so it's got a good chance of appearing on your exam. Factor theorem also fits into that category where the questions don't really differ too much from year to year. When I do say factor theorem, I obviously include remainder theorem in that as well. Um, I noticed on one of the papers it was actually a non-calculator question. So just be aware there will be testing your algebraic skills, your numerical skills as well through different topics. And factor theorem could be one of those topics too. Notice I've put this, pushed this more into the almost certain category as well because they will test this in some way, whether it's on paper one or paper two. Vectors. Now, it's interesting with vectors when I was going through the different papers. It usually come in one of two styles. 
Uh, the first style is very similar to the standard IGCSE, where they just give you some vector algebra, they give you the ratio of the lines two to three, something like this, and then they get you to work out a particular vector, which is kind of standard. And then uh, the second part I want to mention here is vector equations. So know how to make a vector equation using position vector and velocity or direction vector, and then do some kind of operations with that, whether it's finding whether they collide or intersect or they miss, or uh, the distance between them as well. So some kind of problem solving with that too. Quadratics, which again is a bit of a loose topic when I say quadratics, because really what I'm saying here is it can include quite a few different skills. <clears throat> uh, the first one could be completing the square. Something I haven't actually written here is also using discriminant. I didn't mention that explicitly. That's come up a couple of times using the idea of b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero in some way. But usually the direction that they go in on the AdMaths course is solving an exponential or logarithmic equation by a substitution. So you can turn it into a quadratic, then solve it, and then use a little bit of exponential to logs at the end. That generally seems to be the tendency they're going in the last couple of years with quadratics. They're testing not only your exponential and logarithmic knowledge, which I haven't put as a separate category here, but then also testing your quadratics too. On to then the three big four topics that we're coming up to here. The first one is trig equations. This is probably not a surprise if you've done the AdMaths course. So it's solving trigonometric equations, um, but often they integrate the use of identities, which you need to be aware of, or even the double angle formula as well. And you need to know how the graphs look and function and work. I will talk about that right at the end as well, the exact values, and then tying that all together to actually find the solutions to a trig equation within a given domain. Differentiation, again, this should not be a surprise to you in the slightest that it comes up in the almost certain category. I've tried to break this down to categories where differentiation appears. Uh, the first one is the kind of obvious one, which is direct differentiation using the product rule and quotient rule. So you need to know how to use both of those. Uh, number two, which comes up reasonably often, is tangents and normals to curves. So differentiating, find the gradient at a specific point, and then using some coordinate geometry. Finding stationary points, so maxima, minima, so doing single differentiation, double differentiation, and working out whether they are maxima, minima, points of inflection. And then sometimes they do it as a subpart of the question, so you get to do some differentiation, and that will help you to do some integration by inspection a bit later on at the end of the question. So they may put that in there as well. And of course, I've mentioned differentiation, so obviously integration is going to be mentioned here too. Again, a vast variety of forms. I tried to break this down for you as well. Number one is finding areas between two curves. Now, this here could combine also with coordinate geometry in some way in order to two or simultaneous equations. So just be aware of that. Uh, direct integration, so they just give you a function to integrate. That can happen. Um, remember how to integrate a fraction specifically. I've seen lots of questions where they say, okay, integrate one over two X minus one, for example, and using natural logs on that, it comes up quite often. And then quite interesting at the harder end of this course, working backwards to find one limit of the integration. It's not really working backwards, but what I mean here is you work through the integration process and then you'll get an equation in terms of A or something, which you then have to solve. So just be aware, integration can appear in many different forms, and these are the four main kinds of forms that have appeared. However, these are not the most common topic, surprisingly. There is actually a more common topic that I kind of alluded to a bit earlier, and that is graph sketching. So graph sketching is such a fundamental part of this course. It helps your understanding on lots of the topics I've already mentioned here. Um, the specific things you need to know here, usually at the start of a paper, is to how to sketch a cubic, so how a cubic looks like, and then work out the various different points, y-intercepts and the x-intercepts. Uh, sketching modulus functions, so knowing how that works, for example, um, what would be the difference between sketching this, for example, and then sketching this, so knowing the difference, applying that into a more complicated question. Uh, sketching trig functions as well, that comes into the sinusoidal modeling I mentioned right on the very first slide, so that's kind of a crossover where graph sketching, sinusoidal modeling, again, that's kind of a separate topic, you have the amplitude and period, etc. And then also a mixture of one and two here. So say they give you a cubic function, but they put, put modular signs around it. Okay, how does that actually affect what the graph looks like? I've seen a couple of questions like that.
So those are the topics I'd recommend to look through. Of course, it is a lot. Again, the Ad Maths course is a challenging course uh, for your age, but it's really good preparation for both the A-level and IB courses. So I can see why you're doing it. You've got about a month from the release of this video to actually go and practice those topics and make sure you're really happy with all those past papers out there. All right, hopefully you found those predictions useful. If you want a paper two prediction video, please do let me know. Uh, this is the first year I've done an ad maths prediction video specifically. So if you found this helpful, please let me know and I'll start putting a paper two one together as well. All right, bye bye for now.